Hello everybody, welcome back to lesson three of this workshop where we're going to be practicing drawing animals. For this lesson, I'm going to be drawing a dog using charcoal pencils and I'm going to be giving you lots of tips for how to render things like the fur. Firstly, I used a graphite pencil to create a basic sketch outline. I included the dog's main features as well as giving some lines to indicate the direction the fur was going in in each area. You don't need to include a lot of detail in your sketch and remember to keep it nice and light so that it's easier to erase any mistakes and make sure that you're 100% happy with your sketch before moving on to shading it in. I'm going to start off by using the 2B charcoal pencil to establish all of the darker values in the drawing. So if you look at the reference photo, you'll see that the sunlight is hitting the right side of the dog's face. So this makes the left side a lot darker. So most of our shadows are going to be on the left side, particularly the left ear that's got a lot of shadow in it. So I start off by establishing the shadows throughout the left ear. And when I'm drawing fur, I make sure to go in lines with my pencil rather than in circular motions. In the last part, I was mainly using circular motions when I was shading in with my charcoal pencils. But whenever you're drawing fur or hair, make sure to go in lines that flow with the direction the fur or hair is going in. We'll be doing this technique a lot more with the portrait study in the next lesson where we'll be drawing the hair. I also shade in the pupil and remember the left side is in more shadow, so the left eye is going to be a lot darker than the right eye. One thing you may notice with the ear is that I didn't include the really dark value on the right hand side of the left ear and that is because that is quite a large area so I'm going to be filling that in with the charcoal block later on. I'm now sketching in the shorter fur between the dog's eyes and when you are drawing shorter fur make sure you use shorter pencil strokes. When you're drawing long fur your pencil strokes will be a lot longer. So the length of your pencil strokes is determined by the length of the fur. So I'm not filling in all of the fur on the dog's face, only the shadowed parts at the moment. And make sure that you're always following the direction the fur is going in. I also fill in the nostrils and the darker parts of the nose. I don't fill in with this 2B pencil any part of the top of the nose as that is a bit lighter. I also fill in the mouth as well. And I'm gonna go throughout the body of the dog and add in all of the darker patches of the body. With the dog's body, it is a lot blurrier and out of focus. So you don't need to include any detail when you're drawing and shading in the body. Just keep it nice and simple because we want this to look out of focus to add more depth to the drawing. So if something is blurrier or more out of focus, think in your mind that that means less detail, where something that's in more focus is going to need more detail. I'm also shading in a bit of shadow for the right eye, but remember this has got a lot of sunlight hitting it, so it won't be as dark as the left eye. So just keep that in mind when you fill in the pupil and around the eye and also that crease as well. You can still use your 2B pencil, but don't apply as much pressure. I'm now adding in a few bits of shading to more of the shadowed areas around the nose and the mouth, but that is pretty much it for the 2B pencil. Now I'm gonna switch over to my charcoal block and use this to fill in areas that are even darker or the large areas of shadow. So like I mentioned earlier, I missed out this section of the ear because it's a large shadow which would have been a lot easier to get in with the charcoal block. Plus it's very dark and this charcoal block is even darker than the 2B pencil. So go throughout your drawing and add in this section of the ear and also you can use this charcoal block on any areas that you feel aren't dark enough with the 2B pencil. But really you don't need to use that on too many areas. I'm now gonna move on to adding in all of the mid-tone values with the H pencil. So this is a lot lighter than the 2B and it's also a harder lead which makes it easier to get in details. So I'm shading in the iris of the dog's eye and I'm also going to be using this to add a lot of that fur texture. So make sure that you're keeping your pencils nice and sharp and with the H pencil you won't have to sharpen it as much because it is a harder lead. You can see that I'm going in circular motions when I'm shading in the eyes but remember you don't want to go in circular motions when you're drawing the fur. Always keep following the direction the fur is going in. 
And one thing you'll notice is that the fur actually curves with the anatomy and the structure of the face. So make sure that you're following that and not just drawing the fur all in the same direction. If you draw the fur in the same direction, then it's just gonna make your drawing look flat. Make sure that your fur curves with the anatomy of the dog's face and the muzzle to make everything look three-dimensional. So really, the only areas that you'll want to leave white are the highlights. And when we go and blend them out, don't worry, we will be adding some of that charcoal powder onto the areas because no part of the reference is actually white. But for now, miss out all of the major highlights and leave them white and just shade in the midtone values. For the really, really short fur, I'm really just using dash markings because it is so short. So I'm continuing to build up the fur texture on the face and I'm also going to be adding a lot of shading using the H pencil to the right ear because the shadows on this ear are a lighter value than the shadows for the left ear because it's got the sunlight hitting it. Once again, I'm doing this using lines rather than circular motions. Now, one thing to mention is that I will be building up multiple layers using this pencil. So I go through and I add all of the shading and then I look at my reference and my drawing and see where I need to build up even more layers of shading using the H pencil. So it's okay if you need to go back to certain areas that you don't feel you've got dark enough and you can even switch back to the 2B pencil if you need to, if you feel like you should put that on a certain area that you haven't already, if you need to darken up a section even more. And you need to do this now because we will be blending it out in a minute. So make sure you're happy with your first layer of shading. So make sure that you do switch back to the 2B pencil if you do need to. Like I'm doing now, I'm filling in the edge of the dog's iris and I'm also going to be adding more shading to the nose and also to the fur between the eyes. Once you're happy with your first layer of shading, we can go and blend all of this out using the De La Rowney round paintbrush. And any small round paintbrush will work for this. So I'm going to be going with the direction the fur is going in when I blend this out and I'm just going to start brushing over the whole of the drawing. So I'm going to be blending everything out. And you don't have to press hard with your brush, just lightly sweep the brush with the direction the fur is going in and this will just soften out those pencil marks. Now you don't want to blend them out completely, we still want to be able to see those pencil marks but we want them to be a bit softer and not so grainy and fuzzy looking. And a way that you can avoid your lines looking fuzzy is making sure that you keep your pencil nice and sharp when you're sketching them in. So as you can see, I'm just blending over everywhere. I do go in circular motions when I'm blending out the eye or the nose where you don't have to follow a direction, but throughout the fur, keep going with the direction the fur is going in. Another cool technique that I use if I wanna darken up an area but I don't wanna add pencil directly to it is that I sketch some of my charcoal block onto a scrap piece of paper, I dip my brush into that charcoal powder and then I use that to add more shading, for example, to the right ear in this case and to the body. And I use this technique a lot if I'm trying to draw an area that is more blurry and out of focus like the body because you don't want the pencil marks to show through otherwise you won't really get that soft look. Whereas using this technique with the brush gives a really soft out of focus look because there's no detail that you're adding in. I'm also using this to darken up some areas of the fur for the dog's face. And you can see how it just subtly darkens everything up. And it's really easy to control how dark you want to get things by using more or less charcoal powder on your brush. I'm also going to use this technique to get in the shading for the background. Now there's not much detail at all in the background, there's just some very light values, especially in the lower half of the background. So I'm dipping my brush into that charcoal powder and just very lightly adding in this shading to the background. Just going in circular motions to make sure everything looks really nice and soft and diffused. And to blend this out even more and give it more of a soft look, I like to use tissue, just like I used in lesson two. So I wrap it around my finger to have more control and I just blend in circular motions to just smooth everything out and give it a really nice soft look. And again, you can use this on parts of the, the dog that you wanna smooth out even more, 
Or you can even dip the tissue into some of that charcoal powder and darken up areas using the tissue. Now that we've blended everything out, it's time to work on our second layer of shading. Once again, I start off with the 2B pencil. And really, I'm just applying this pencil in the exact same areas that I did with the first layer. So I'm just going over the areas once again to darken them up even further. Because when you blend with the paintbrush, it can lighten up your shadowed values quite a bit because of the fact that you're blending the charcoal powder onto other areas. So you're spreading that charcoal over large areas when we're filling in the white sections. So I'm going over the eyes and I'm also building up more of a fur texture. And when you work in layers, it gives an even more realistic look to the fur because you'll have layers of pencil strokes, layers of fur, and it does give it that really natural layered look. Now the 2B pencil does wear down quite quickly, so make sure that you keep sharpening it because you will get those fuzzy lines, which we don't want. We want them to look nice and sharp and crisp. You can see I'm doing really short pencil strokes when I'm getting in the short fur. And I'm also filling in the nostrils and the middle part of the nose as well. And this step really just makes everything pop so much more. And it's great because you're already working over the top of your base layer. So everything just pulls together really fast once you start doing these final steps. I also work on the right eye, making sure to keep it lighter than the left. It can be very tempting and easy to make this the same darkness value as the left eye but make sure because we want that illusion that the sunlight is hitting the right side of the face so make sure that you keep it nice and light. I'm also adding the shadows to the right side of the face making sure to keep curving that with the anatomy of the dog's skull and I'm working around the muzzle as well. Now this can be very time consuming but be patient and just keep working at it. Remember when you're doing the body you don't need to include a lot of detail. You can do a few pencil strokes to indicate the direction the fur is going in on the body like I am doing but try not to add in too much detail as it will ruin that illusion that the body is out of focus. Once I've finished adding all of the darker shadows with the 2B pencil, I switch back to the H pencil and use this to add in the mid-tone values, like on this ear again. And this ear has got a lot of highlight, but we do want to make sure that we've got some of those darker shadows so that the ear still has a lot of contrast, even though there's going to be a lot of highlights within this area. I'm also adding some little wispy bits of fur that break up the, the uniformed look of the fur by adding little flyaway bits of fur that go over into the background. I then soften over everything using the paintbrush, but I am even lighter than I was with the first layer because I don't want to soften everything out. I just want to get rid of that harsh look of the pencil strokes. So you're not trying to blend everything out. You're just lightly, very lightly dusting over the pencil strokes just to soften them out a tiny bit so that they don't look so harsh. And this just helps to merge them all together to give that natural fur texture. Once again, I'm switching back over to the 2B to add the final shadows before we move on to adding in the highlights. And you only need to add this pencil now to any areas that you feel need to go even darker. It's okay to build up the shadows slowly and go in with multiple layers rather than going in straight away with a really dark pencil if you find that overwhelming. So it's always fine to add in more and more layers. And once again adding even more shadow to the body of the dog because I still want that area to have a lot of contrast to it. And once again keep softening over these areas with the brush to integrate everything together and merge all of the fur texture together. And finally, I'm using that charcoal block to darken up the ear even more. You can also use the charcoal block to add a final layer to the darkest areas. So for me, I was finding that the fur between the eyes, I wasn't getting dark enough with that 2B pencil, so I just went over it with a bit of the charcoal block and that really made it pop. Now moving on to using the Tombow Mono Eraser and I love these stick erasers for getting in detailed highlights and adding even more texture to the drawing. So I'm starting off with the left ear and I'm just adding in the flyaway bits of fur 
on the edge of the ear and it's important to add these little bits of fur that are sweeping onto the background to help tie the, the animal in with its surroundings, in with the background. And now you can clearly see that in the reference there's wind blowing on the ear. So you want your drawing to have that windswept look. So the way that I'm doing this is I'm making sure that I'm adding little bits of fur that are sweeping over from the ear onto the face. And I'm following closely the direction that the fur is blowing in in the reference image. But when the wind is blowing through the fur, it's not all going to be going in exactly the same direction. When wind is blowing something, it's going to be a bit random and there's going to be bits of fur that are blowing in different directions. So try not to be uniformed when you're doing this. Try to be a bit loose and add some random little flyaway bits of fur going in different directions to help it look more natural and more windswept. I then also add the brighter highlights to the nose and to the highlights in the iris above the pupil. And when you want highlights to be really bright, press a bit harder on your eraser. But if you want subtle highlights or just to add a bit of texture, then you can go in even lighter with your eraser. I'm also going to be using the blending stump to blend out areas of the background even more. So I shaded down some pencil and now I'm just going in circular motion and blending it out with the blending stump just to darken up sections of the background to really make it pop. But here is the final drawing for this lesson. I really hope you enjoyed following along and learning more about how to draw realistic animals using charcoal. So in the next and final lesson, we will be focusing on rendering realistic portraits using charcoal. So I'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye everybody.